Jan Ezra here from Streaming Media. I'm meeting with Anthony Giuliani from 12 Labs. 12 Labs. And we're sitting here arguing exactly what his company does, so I figured I'd bring that into the discussion as quickly as possible. What I'm seeing is his company does is they have a product that allows you to pull metadata from a video file. So it can interrogate the video file, pull information from it, and then that becomes usable data instead of metadata. So why don't you start there and tell us what your company really does. Sure, so uh, we build uh, multimodal uh, video understanding models that allow you to understand, um, uh, allows you to understand videos like uh, human, humans do. So if I would ask you to think of a movie scene uh, where there's somebody making a choice between taking a red pill or a blue pill, if you've seen The Matrix, your mind might immediately go to that scene in that movie. When you're doing that, your mind doesn't watch every single movie you've ever seen to come to that point. There's no tagging, there's no metadata associated with that movie in your mind, but your mind has this kind of representation of everything you've seen, and it pulls that scene out right away. So. When we create video embeddings, it's kind of how a large language model creates text embeddings. Those text embeddings allow you to dynamically engage with text in ways that humans have never been able to do before. And that's what we allow you to do with those video embeddings. So when you index the video, it creates, excuse me, yeah, when you index the video, it creates those embeddings, which allows you to search, classify, or do any other kind of downstream task with your video without relying on any tagging or metadata. Okay, so you don't, do you eliminate the need for metadata or you supplement existing metadata or all of the above? All of the above, so we eliminate the need for metadata, but if you do have metadata, uh, that actually complements the embeddings that we create. So for example, if we're searching for an awesome touchdown pass, uh, we can find that awesome touchdown pass, but we may not know uh, if that was in 2017 or 2018. So if that type of information uh, you have as metadata, you'd be able to stack those searches on top of each other to find an awesome touchdown pass in 2018. So, so give us um, a high level view of what artificial intelligence modalities you're using in this product. Yeah, so when we say multimodal, we're taking in all the modalities within video. So that includes sound, audio, speech, OCR, logos, actions. And so if you're watching or just listening to a comedian uh, telling a joke with just audio only, it's a much different experience than if you're actually watching that through video. We're actually capturing the time delay, the delivery of the joke, facial reaction. So all those additional uh, components of the of the video add to the richness of that understanding. So we take all those elements in uh, and include those in our uh, search results. So is that machine learning, artificial, or uh, generative AI? I mean, what what type of AI is it? Yeah, it's we're built. It's machine learning AI. We're we're basically training our own models. So just like uh, OpenAI and Throughout Big Cohere train large language models, uh, we're using a similar type of process of uh, building a multimodal uh, video understanding model, starting with video first. So who's using the product today, and how are they using it? So we have over 20,000 developers that have signed up to our playground. Uh, we just provide the API tools, so if they're building an application on top of us, we may not even know what they're actually building. Um, some of the enterprise customers that we work with, uh, the NFL has been kind enough to provide a quote for us so we can uh, talk about that relationship that we have. And um, they're using it uh, in di different ways, but you can imagine in finding amazing uh, plays or footage that they have in their archive that people working in post-production might want to use and push out uh, uh, for their audience. So how does that work? I mean, I've got this big video file of the Super Bowl from 2024, and then I use your tool. Does that create a separate text file or create a separate model? I mean, how, what does it create that I interrogate for, you know, to find out what's in it? Yeah, so it goes back to the uh, video embedding. So when you uh, index that Super Bowl video, uh, we create embeddings, and those embeddings are stored in a vector database. Um, and when you query uh, a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl, we're able to find that touchdown pass, so it's querying that vectorized database. And then if you want to know it was in the 2024 Super Bowl, that would probably, uh, that, that would be metadata that our customer would have that would be able to stack that additional search on top of the touchdown pass. So I can get that just by uh, 
using the text, you know, so I do a, a, a voice to text and I know where the touchdown pass is. What are you adding to that? So basically in, in this example, if I could actually get you to repeat that, just that question again. I so I so uh, if I run an, you know, audio to text conversion, I've got a transcript for that file and I can find touchdown passes very easily just by using the transcribe file. So what are you adding to that beyond what I can, you know, I know where the touchdown is, I can, I can get there. What are you adding to that? So we'll just imagine if you have uh, video files of a sporting event and there is actually no transcription or no audio. Maybe you're taking uh, footage of a practice and there's no announcer in that play and you see uh, a quarterback throwing a touchdown pass. There's no way from the audio that you'd be able to know that's a touchdown pass but our technology understands what it means to pass. It understands what an end zone would be. And so it would understand that that's a touchdown pass, even if there's no uh, audio component to that, to that file. You know, a, a four-year-old doesn't understand what a touchdown pass is. And I guess I'm, I'm amazed at the size of your claim. I mean, you're basically saying we create technology that allows a human understanding of a video. I mean, how do you do that? I mean, how many years of, what, what's the secret sauce that, isn't obvious to, to all of us because it takes a, you know, a 12-year-old might understand what a touchdown pass is, maybe an 8-year-old, but, I mean, how do you get that much, ex you know, angry face, sad face, sarcastic, non-sarcastic, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. How did you gain the ability to be able to categorize that? Yeah, it's uh, incredibly technology, it's incredibly difficult technology to build. Um, our team is research and product company. Uh, so we have over 40 uh, research scientists and engineers that have dedicated their careers to this kind of technology, marrying video and language together. Um, so you're right, it is very difficult. It's hard to imagine uh, until you actually run a search result and you actually see it. Um, and I would say that the model understands the world generally. So for example, if I ask you um, to think of a spike, what comes to your mind? A railroad spike. So our model might understand a spike to be the same thing. In football, a spike means throwing a football straight into the ground. And so that kind of subject matter expertise, we allow fine tuning to be able to have the model understand more complex understanding of the world, but it understands the world generally as it is as maybe a teenager would. Okay. So how are you productizing and monetizing this? So we productize it. We basically serve uh, this our models up to developers and enterprises through APIs. It's a straightforward pricing model. It's all consumption based. So we charge per minute a video index, and we index uh, in private cloud, public cloud, or we can do on prem. And um, that's basically our model. So where are you in the monetization journey? I mean, is it? Can I go to your website and start working with it or? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a self-serve process. You can go to our playground. Uh, you can use videos free of charge that we already have indexed. You can upload up to 10 free hours in the playground to try it. If you go beyond those 10 hours, then it's a charge, uh, it's a price per minute. And then uh, for enterprise clients, we can always, we can always have uh, customized pricing discussions based on their needs and volume. What's the standard price per minute? Uh, it can range between 2 to $3. It depends upon modality, but all of our pricing is on the website uh, and able to see, and we're working on always bringing down that cost of the pricing uh, as we make adv advancements in indexing time and reducing the overall infrastructure cost to maintain that database for our customers. Who are the, cust who are the types of customers who have, or prospects who have generated the most interest in this so far? There are several. In 2024, I would say that it's media and entertainment companies, so studios, sports organizations, anybody with a large, massive video archive. You also have uh, security, user-generated content. Really, our vision for the company, too, we want to think about what 2025, 2026, and beyond looks like. So what our goal and our vision is as a company is to take these models, improve the uh, complexity of them, increase the complexity, increase the modalities. We want to be able to move this into real time. We also want to make these models smaller and put them on edge. And when we do that, it's going to unlock use cases. Uh, really, we want to become the perception and reasoning capability of, say, um, 
powering robotic use cases or autonomous driving vehicles. We're already getting into some automobile manufacturing conversations right now, but at 2024, I would say uh, news organizations, media and entertainment use cases, um, sports, and you can uh, have contextual advertising content, content recommendation systems that leverage our embeddings as uh, particular use cases in the media and entertainment space. So why do I want to apply your product to my primetime show? What do I learn from your product that I couldn't get from the script and the audio transcription we talked about before? Well, it depends what your workflow is. And so let's just think of a sports example. Um, if you have a famous athlete and that athlete may pass away or that athlete creates a new record, or for example, Tom Brady comes out of retirement, you have to be able to very quickly come up with new content to be able to create a story around Tom Brady or that athlete. So using our technology, you'd be able to very quickly and sub-second search uh, time frame, be able to find any kind of content in your archive related to what kind of story you want to do. And that type of thing is not really scripted. You have to find new and interesting, or not new content, but find content in your archive that you might not even know exist. So you, yeah, you can't tag enough to deliver 100% functionality. I guess you're vastly supplementing that with, with, your, with your technology. Yeah, most definitely. And tagging is also uh, inflexible. It's uh, predefined. It's limited to what you can actually do in the moment. And the one person that tags something in the morning might actually tag something different in the afternoon. So sometimes even the same person might not agree with themselves on how they would actually label something. And through these embeddings, we do that automatically for you to get access to some kind of search that you may not even think that you would need in the future. So if we did a demo, you know, we're at a trade show and it's challenging to do a demo and, and certainly get a high quality shot of that. But if we did a demo, what would we see? Uh, a demo of this trade show or this particular conversation or? No, a demo of, if I went to your booth right now and you showed me a demo of your technology, what would what would you show me? Yeah, so I think um, one, one, one search result that I think is, is kind of fun is, um, somebody tackling another person and the search result is a mascot pushing somebody and then jumping on top of them. Or you could show uh, a search result is um, uh, cars racing through a dystopian future. And so traditional computer vision might find cars pretty easily, but what does it mean to be racing and what does this dystopian future look like? You would be able to find a scene of that. Okay, so maybe we'll get you to, do you have any demonstrations online or? Uh, we have videos on the line. We also have the playground where people can do their own demonstrations. And we have a whole host of search queries at our demo booth where you can uh, try those out as well with what, our team. What's that website? Uh, 12labs.io. Okay. Listen, Anthony, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thank you, too.